Marsh, this ain't the Chamonix, brother. I don't know. You either. said him and then he said, I, I, like I could be a tough pick. <laughs> I'm Adam Brenneman. This, 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 this is. Next up. What's up, everyone? Welcome into the Next Up Podcast. I'm Adam Brenneman. We're here on campus at Villanova, outside of Philadelphia, talking to the Villanova basketball team, fresh off a big win last night, and I brought a special guest, former national champion at Kansas, Mitch Lightfoot. What's going on, everybody? Super excited to be here, getting to interview some real special guys, especially after playing against them less than nine months ago. Today, we're sitting down with Chris Archidiakono, Justin Moore, and Eric Dixon. Let's go see what the guys are up to, man. Like, was it crazy or like when uh when you when you got hurt like what was it what was that like like I know it was a shitty situation but you you're playing well now and how was coming back from that yeah I mean it was a lot of ups and downs you know what I mean uh of course getting hurt wasn't the best but mm -hmm. um just sticking with it having my teammates and friends and family with me that was like pushing me um that was great and mm -hmm. then having days where like you don't want to work you know what I mean? Sometimes it's just hard, but then other days where you're pushing through it and accomplishing little milestones, so it was good. Seeing like, you guys being around him, like what 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 was it like seeing him work through it and and putting that work? Uh, to start at first, it was tough because he's our guy. We didn't want to see him go down the way he did, but his recovery ever since he's been with our trainer Dan every single day in the weight room, and we knew at some point he's gonna come back uh, the way he has, like his old self. So I'm um, just proud of him and all the work and recovery that he put in helped him get back to being the player he is now again. For sure. Yeah, I would say uh, we all have those days that we don't want to come in and go to work. I think it's inspiring for us as a team where he comes in and does it. And the situation that he's in, I think it makes us happy that we can come in and work and do the things that we love to do. For sure. All right, now for, uh, now for a little, little bit different switch up. To redo your wardrobe, you had to give somebody your credit card on your team. Mm, so, like, they had to be, like, efficient. So I, mean, they, I mean, they can either be efficient, they can ball out. I mean, no, we got ball out kind of status. <laughs> I'll st I guess I'll start. I'll go with Slate. I think he's got a similar style to me. We're both big. Uh, we like Lulu, Lulu Lemon. So smart I, man. I would go with Brandon Slater. I probably go either Trey or Mark. Like, cause I, I they got like kind of some fancy stuff, uh -huh. like some designer, but like not too. It don't cost too much. Like not going to break the bank? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I feel like them two, they know how to balance it. That's a good one. I don't know. I feel like Mark breaks the bank uh, a lot. <laughs> too much for me. I'll probably go with I'll probably go with Caleb. I feel like he keeps it, you know, cost efficient, simple, clean. Yeah. You know, can't Smooth. go wrong there. What has changed the most about your game from your freshman year to now? Mm. I'll probably say, like, leadership, like talking. I, when I wasn't really talking much when I came in as a freshman. I kind of just, like, played. So I think that's probably the most thing that's changed, like, talking to the guys, to the coaches, like, being more hours to everyone. I think you can say that for all of us coming in. Uh, as a freshman, the older guys are always the ones leading. So I think everyone in this room is taking up that role really well. Um, but besides that, for me, I think um, – my defense, uh, that's kind of one of the reasons why I'm on the floor right now versus when I got here, it was a lot harder to guard. Um, so I think that's somewhere that I improved the most over the years. Yeah, I would say conditioning and pride in getting stops. I think pride in playing defense. For me, definitely in high school, like my defense was offense. You know, like if the guy had 30, I really didn't care because I was going to get 40. That was kind of my approach to things. And I think since coming here and being around a lot of guys that can score, we have a lot of scorers, a lot of talented guys. So... Uh, taking pride in getting stops and being able to hold my own on that end is really important to me now. Who are the guys that mentored you guys the most when you guys were young? Like, what? who are those guys? And, like, what, what was the biggest thing they taught you? For me, uh, it was guys that, like, weren't on the team at the time. Like, guys from past teams. Mm -hmm. A guy named Javon Pinkston, a guy named James Bell. Just coming in, like, I thought it was going to be, like, bruiser, physical enforcer. And it's like, all these guys are strong. All these guys can do that same kind of thing. So, 
just trying to get the advantage mentally. And for me, I had the red shirt. So obviously I didn't learn, you know, at a crazy rate, but, you know, just them consistently talking to me and teaching me things, I think just gave me a little edge mentally that I didn't necessarily have physically. For sure. For me, I had a little bit of a head start with my brother coming here and knowing what the program was going to be like. Um, so I think I came in with a little bit of what Villanova basketball was. But after that, I think Sadiq Bay, Con Gillespie were two guys that just, they did it by example every single day in practice, trying to be the hardest working and hardest playing guys every single day. So I think just modeling my everyday life as a Villanova basketball player off them is what's really helped me to succeed at this level. For sure. I'd probably say um, Malik Wayans. Um, I think we were kind of really close just because, like, we both kind of hard-headed, um, got into it with, like, Coach Ryan and stuff. But, like, we both wanted to win and were, like, competitive. So he saw, like, that side of me and taught me a lot of things how to maneuver through this program. With, uh, like, you mentioned Coach Wright. Like, what, what's been, like, the main difference, you guys, transitioning to Coach Neptune? I know he's 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 a different style of coach, but also he learned from Coach Wright. Like, what's, what's, the, what's the difference been for you guys? Um, I say... Um, I think Coach Neptune is more like he can relate kind of to where he's younger, so I think he can relate to like this generation of basketball players now. So it's not where like sometimes Coach Wright would say things and like we don't know what he's really talking about. Where like <laughs> Coach Neptune kind of kind of relate to us and give us like um, pinpointer things that like we know what he's talking about. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I would say a lot of things are the same. I think his approach and all the things he says, all of our signs are still the same. I would say the difference is probably just like his attitude. Like mm -hmm. Joe said, he's younger, so just a little more energy, a little more aggressiveness, if you will. But, I mean, for the most part, pretty similar. Yeah, they both had a lot of passion. Coach Neff's definitely fiery on the sideline. and He's been a great coach. Um, learning, to be, uh, learning to be a good coach. Um, as an assistant here for a while, I think he's modeled a lot of his coaching after Coach Wright, so not too much is different. Having played against you guys a couple times, like you guys were always so damn disciplined, and like you knew you were going to make the right play. You guys were always making the next pass, and it was so hard because being the other team, like you're like you can't get away with anything. Like any little mistake you made was going to be you guys were taking advantage of it, and it was kind of kind of cool to see you guys last night really put that all together and get a big win. What was the what was the environment like in, at Xavier? Was the place was juiced? Yeah, definitely. Um, every time we play out there, it's sort of hostile environment, a great atmosphere. It just makes you want to come together um, even more. Mm -hmm. You're on the road. It's just each other. Is that I the think. hardest environment to play in in the Big East? It's up there. I'd probably say Providence is up there. Crane's um, are crazy? Crane's Crane. up there, too. What's the craziest experience you guys have had with an opposing like fan base? Like, could say anything crazy? I know... I've been on the road and people have said some real crazy stuff. Like, you look at them like. For me, I have to say Ohio State, my freshman year. Definitely. I wasn't playing, but like, <laughs> Ohio State, they're saying anything to coach, right? Anything to the players, come to guys' families, <laughs> talking right. Yeah, their student section was right behind the bench, yeah, too. Like, like, that's like whenever like you're sitting in front of their student section, like, you hear everything. Yeah. Like, they're like going back. Yeah. Talking about ex-girlfriends and yeah. looking up your history. Yeah. Like, that was kind of thing for us. Like, TCU had, like, like Texas Christian. Like, yeah. they would come at you sideways <laughs> for no reasons. How has NIL changed the landscape of college basketball or college athletics? I think the goal or one of the ways that it can help is that guys, um, as a student athlete, sometimes it was hard to, I don't know, get meals, get – anything the necessities you need throughout the week mm -hmm. um, but besides that I think a little bit maybe help got college guys stay in school a little bit longer while they're making money instead of trying to just make that jump into the NBA um, sometimes prematurely yeah for sure yeah I agree um, just be able to we put so much uh, hard and pain into this game so and we create a lot of money for college basketball so I think it's good for us to get rewarded for that I only say the one bad thing is like I think some guys is kind of so only thinking about the money. So, like, they're not really as, like, in it for the wrong the reasons. Yeah, they're in it for just the money. Like, they're going to a school just for the money and not for the game of basketball, their career. So, I think that's where it could get things mixed up. But for the most part, I like that. It's really kind of crazy. Like, I think about it, like, with the, especially with the, like, one-time transfer policy. Like, 
it's really kind of unrestricted free agency. Like yeah. you, you get people that are, oh, I can make more money here and I don't have to sit out, gone. Like yeah. I think that's, we talked about this in a podcast before, like there's gonna, like, there's gonna be a time when they have to change something because people are just chasing the bag. And sure. I mean, can you blame them? Like trying to make as much money as you can, I get it, I understand, but like it's, it's gotta, it's gotta change at some point. Yeah, it's in the early stages of it, so they're gonna have to figure it out. Do you guys think there's gonna be more regulations put on it? Like, there's gonna, is there gonna be more? Or? I think we'll be gone by then, by that time. So it won't matter for us, but they're gonna, yeah, at some point, I think they're gonna have to put reg- regulations on a little bit to make it not as much like the wild, wild west. <laughs> what, uh, kind of change the topic a little bit, recruiting. What are the craziest recruiting stories you guys had? Your favorite visits? Like, obviously, you guys ended up at Villanova. Like, is there anything, anything cool that happened on other visits? Um, experiences in that, uh, that view crazy experiences um I, th- I visited Notre Dame with like a few of my teammates in high school we went to the football game I forgot who they played but the atmosphere was just amazing Notre Dame football is yeah it serious was, it was lit so I really enjoyed it out there I'm trying to think who else that's the that's probably the best one I could think of for me, I didn't. I didn't really like do a lot of visiting mm-hmm. during my recruiting period. Mm-hmm. I recruited very. I mean, I committed very early, but I mean, definitely like went to Penn State for Penn State football. Like <laughs> here from PA, that's everything. So it was a whiteout game too. You know, they were throwing people up in the stands for the push-ups. Or for when they score, it's like sixty points. Yeah, <laughs> they like sixty throw-ups. And I was like, okay, that's so deep. But uh, nah, yeah, I didn't have like a crazy recruiting experience. Same with Eric. Um, I always kind of had my mindset on Villanova, so. I think once uh, I got the offer here, I knew I was going to come here, so I didn't really visit any other places. What's the favorite moment from each of your guys' careers thus far? Easy. It's got a Big East tournament, Big East. tournament, Big East tournament title, and the Final Four. Get into the Final Four. Yeah, probably the Big East run. Yeah, Big East. At Madison Square Garden. It was the atmosphere was amazing. Talk about Madison Square Garden a little bit. That place is different. Like yeah. it's for people that don't know, like explain it a little bit, like the the vibe around MSG. Yeah, it's just the biggest stage you could play at, to be honest. Like it prepares you for the tournament, honestly. Like some games, I feel like that biggest tournament is probably more exciting and more packed than some of the games we played in the tournament. So the environment, the fans, it's loud in there, you can't hear anything. The arena's shaking. Um, it's just a great environment to play in. We're fortunate to play there a lot because we're a local team. But, mm-hmm. like, when you play there, the lighting is all different. So, kind of the court is the only thing that's lit. And you can't really see, like, the crowd at all. So, that's, like, it's, like, kind of like a show. But um, it's definitely a great environment with a bunch of history. And uh, we normally play well there. So, we love going to MSG whenever we can. For sure. For sure. What a uh, funniest thing Coach Neptune or Coach Wright has said to you guys, whether that be in practice during a game I know uh, emotions always get high during games, but like, what's what's something either Coach Neptune or Coach Wright has said that you were like, "Dang, Coach, you tweaking?" Hmm. <laughs> he cursed me out a few times. I ain't gonna say what he said, but it kind of was just like he cursed me out, and I kind of like if you curse me out, I take it as like some kind of disrespect. So like, I kind of just laughed, and I'm like, "All right, like, you got me messed up right now," but. Um, I'm trying to think some other ones. It's just funny when Coach Wright just like yells at you. To be honest, like it catch you off guard, and like to see him like he kind of get older. He's kind of older, so like when you see him get in that like full fiery mode, I it kind of made me laugh a little bit instead of like be more serious. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I forget. We were up. We were up. Size about maybe like fifteen, like three minutes left. One of our early games last year, and I, I just started starting last year, just started uh-huh. playing a lot. And I, we were like 15, and we were having a good game as a team, moving the ball, playing well. Everybody had like 10, 15 points, or whatever. He kind of just went to a huddle for the four minute media. He just zoned in on me. He was like, he like You better be ready to go. Like, you've never done it at this level before. You know, da 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 da. Obviously, you know, some, some obscenity there, but, you know, just really going in on me. And everybody's kind of just looking at me like, you know, you're good, like you're going to respond. And, I think it's one of those things. For me, it was like, okay, he's taking me seriously as a player now. So uh, whether it was crazy or whatever, I think that's just one of the moments that sticks out to me mm-hmm. in my career. 
I don't have anything crazy from a game, but like my freshman year, I made this dumb play go to the rim. And I think like you either blocked my shot um, at the rim. And he was like, Arch, this ain't the Chamonix, brother. And that was my high school. So um, that was funny coming in as a freshman and just getting hearing something like that from Coach Wright. You uh, you following your brother's footsteps, like what what has that been like? What is making your own making your own making your own way here for yourself been like, and making your own uh, career for yourself been like here for you? Um, no, it's been a great experience with these guys, and um, I've had the best time here. We've c- accomplished a lot of things. Um, I always wanted to come here; it was a dream of mine to come and play Villanova and being able to do that and put on the jersey and practice jersey every single day. It's really been a blessing. Um, I just love going through the grind with my team every day. Yeah, you- hey, I mean, I know we're talking about, you know, him making his own legacy and everything like that, but, like, me and Arch played the same league in high school, so I know him very well. And, like, this guy, this guy was a player before he came. Like, I know about him probably before I know about his brother. Like, I know about his brother from Villanova, but, like, going to league games, stuff like that, like, we knew who he was. And in high school, he had, like, what was it, like, two or three 50-point games in the state playoffs, like, stuff like that. Two or three 50-point games? Yeah, like, back-to-back. Damn. So, so like <laughs> we knew who he was. Like it wasn't like, oh, this is Martin Archdiakon's little brother. Like uh-huh. you know, you see on the scout, you're like, oh, that's that's Chris Archdiakon. It's a bucket. Like, yeah, it's not like just some guy out there. So I think it's funny how he handles himself and following his brother's footsteps because he's a great player in his own right. And I always knew that coming in. Everybody asked me, like, oh, like you know, you're going with Archie's little brother, and it's like, no, nah, like I'm going with Chris Archdiakon. So what uh, what is the off season? like here at Villanova? Like, do you guys have your ex-guys come back and play a bunch? Do you guys play basketball around the city? Like, what, what's it like around here? Um, I say off-season, we're kind of here for the most part, um, working out with the team, lifting and stuff. And then, like, pros would come back and play over gym with us, like, pretty much every other day or so. So we kind of spend, like, June, July here for the most part, just grinding. Yeah, same thing. Um, it's a good thing that a bunch of our old guys like to come in and play with us. It's definitely a good experience playing against some of the old players who are in the NBA now. Um, they're really talented, um, and it definitely helps us uh, in the spring for sure. and summer. Who's the hardest player to guard that comes back? I, I mean, from my, my experience, Jalen Brunson spun me around in a circle yeah. in the Final Four. Oh, yeah. So yeah. that was – Yeah, no, definitely. He spun Definitely me around Jaylen. in a circle. I was so lost. He's so the coach sk- was like, what are you doing? How can you not guard that? He's so skilled with the ball. So yeah. I'd go Jalen. Javon Payson. Fuck it. Strong. There's Pascal's strong. up there, too, because he'll just yeah, bully no. it. Like, he'll get wild, though. <laughs> he'll start shooting some wild shots. He, he, uh, like, I checked into the game. Like, I hadn't, in the Final Four, like, I hadn't played in the Final Four, like, at all. It was, like, seven minutes left. You guys had it, like, 23 is about like at that point and uh i got crossed over and like spun around in a circle by john brunson and then what's his name pascal came down and dunked the hell out of it like he had got an offensive rebound and like i was boxing out somebody else and like tried to go like help on him dunked the hell out of it i was like they, there's no way like this team is that team was different in 2018 that team was different they had a good team so many weapons like, you got to choose who you're going to be Hey, Young Loki like. was the coldest one on that team. I mean, not the coldest one, but, like, the hardest, like, matchups-wise was his Spellman. Like, Amari yeah, Spellman right. was. Yeah. I mean, people forget about, like, he was shooting the hell out of that thing. Mm. Athletic. Yeah, for sure. And then you guys had Bridges and yeah. Steven Chinzo, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So many guys. Four he NBA got guys. 30 that game, I think. Like, yeah. crazy experience. This is going to be a little bit of a different question. I saw this on online and I think it'd be fun. Bear with me. Zombie outbreak. Which one of your teammates are you guys taking with you to survive and why? Zombie outbreak. Just one? Just one teammate and that gives you the best chance to survive. I'd probably take Jess just because he just be chill like, and it just gets it done, like whatever. Not gonna, business? Panic, not, not gonna panic too much, not gonna worry too much. I'm gonna listen, like not do anything stupid. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll probably take Jones. Mm. Yeah, I'm going Arch. I'm going Arch. Good choice. That's a good choice. I'd be good. Like, he, he said, not, I don't, I mean, you said him and then he's like, I, I could be a tough pick. I, could be a tough pick. <laughs> I feel like Arch not going full and like he's smart. Like I'm gonna fight. Yeah, like he's not gonna back down. And he's one of the smartest on the team. So he's gonna know how to like strategize and stuff. 
I mean, I got to double up and go with Justin. I was thinking about Caleb for a second, but can't do Caleb. So <laughs> I'm going with Justin. <laughs> uh, Caleb would panic. crazy. Being a part of such like a storied program, you guys have some very passionate fans. Like, and I know it's different, but like, how is how is uh, this year been different than the rest? Have you guys been able to like come closer as a team, come closer as a as, as a as a basketball program altogether? Like, what's what's it been like? I know you guys are, are looking to to finish out the rest of your season on a high note. Like, how uh, how have you guys come together through this season? Um. I think we've come together a lot just because our fans are great, but, you know, we're not winning all the time right now. So, you know, the fans only up with you when you're up and winning and stuff. So we've been losing a lot. So they kind of been not with us as much, um, kind of upset and all that. So it just makes us come together even more and focus about each other. Does a big win like last night really kind of affirm you guys? Like, hey, like, we're like that. Like, you guys, if you weren't with us, Time to get with us. Like we're we're like that. We're I mean, gonna be dangerous coming into the Big East tournament. Yeah, we 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 already knew that though. Like we knew we we're capable. We have the talent. Just a matter matter of putting it together. So we're not trying to prove like you guys hop on board or whatever. Like they gonna hop on board when they see us accomplishing things and stuff. So we're not really worried about that. You guys have just like you're just starting to come into your own. I mean, you got you got Cam back. You got yourself back. Like you guys are a, a great team who's just been going through some stuff. Like it's. It's not every year you have everything falling right, falling right. You're going to have to go through some stuff. And I think you guys have done a great job of, of showing the nation that, hey, we're still we're still here and we're still Villanova basketball. Yeah, like, I think, like, these guys early on just was carrying the torch. You know what I mean? Like, I was all, like you said, Cam, just going through struggles, but we never, like, backed down or we never argued. We just stuck together. And I think that shows a lot about our character and how much we care about this program. I think the program, we do a good job staying together and just always fight until the end. So even when we weren't doing our best, we always gave it our best battle that specific night. But now that we're starting to get healthy and get some guys back, we're starting to turn those games into some wins. What uh, what was your guys' welcome to college moment? I know I had them. I know it happens for freshmen. But what was your college welcome to college moment? For me, we played Marquette. And we were <laughs> up like, <laughs> we were up like, 25, maybe 30, and there was like two minutes left, and the coach threw me in. I didn't play a lot my sophomore year, so coach just threw me in there, and I was playing uh, Theo John. I don't know if you know who he is, but he was like Strong a- Strong yeah, <laughs> He's a big dude. Yeah, shot, shot blocker type dude, and like, you know, he just came in, and right away, Wojnarowski, uh, their coach, drew a call, like two, three straight isos for him. He just backed me under the rim and laid me up, and then I switched on to Garcia, Austin Garcia, he's like trained for a couple of times. He's at Minnesota right now, but then he iced me at the top. There was like four straight buckets, and yeah, it was bad. Ah, I say mine was definitely Ohio State at Ohio State freshman year. Um, who who was on that team? Who was on Ohio State's team that year? Carton, EJ Carton, EJ Liddell was there. Luther, Caleb Dwayne Wesson. Washington, I think. Mm-hmm. Luther, Luther Muhammad, Wesson, Wesson. Good Kyle, team. Kyle Young. Nah, they had guys. Good so team. Kyle Young. Yeah. yeah, that was because, I mean, preseason, I think, like, I think we scrimmaged North Carolina. And I had, like, 30 or something. And I'm like, yeah, like, this sweet out here for real. Like, <laughs> and then early in the season, played some all right teams, but we was winning. So, and I was playing well. So, that was, like, one of those, like, and Coach kept getting on me, like, you're a freshman. They're going to go at you. You're not ready yet, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm killing right now. So, I think Ohio State, the first two possessions, I got scored on right away. And then the crowd's rocking, and then we was, we got blown out by like 30 or so that game. Like, that woke me up for sure. Yeah, I think that game itself, um, same thing as Justin said, coming in as a freshman, you think that it's going to be nice and easy, and then a team like that just blew us out right from the start. It wasn't even close. It was like 15 nothing to start the game. I think we used like two timeouts right nice. real early, but... Nothing changed. I think, like, going to college from high school, like, the speed of it, I mean, this is, in my experience, like, the speed of it was what, like, really shocked me. Like, everything's going by a million miles an hour and feels like you can't catch up. Like, I think that's kind of been, like, a thing for, for freshmen all over the country. Like, you look at them, I think Cam is an exception to that, exception to that rule. Um, 
being as big as he is, as athletic as athletic as he is, like that doesn't really happen a lot with freshmen. So I, I think for myself, it was always a everything's so much faster, so much stronger. Like these guys are so like you go from being the best player on your team in high school, right. the best player in your majority of the time, best player in your state yeah. to food chain flips upside down and now you're having to fight your way back up. Like talk about that, like the battle of, of getting to top of the food chain again. Like what uh what did that take and how have you guys done that? Yeah, it was it was a struggle because I mean for me it wasn't the speed wasn't the issue for me. Um because I just kind of know how to pace myself and like go at my own pace. I'm not letting nobody speed me up. It was more like every possession is like hard as I don't know what. Like I'm used to maybe like go hard five possessions in high school and then take like three possessions off because I'm just talented enough where I can get by. Mm -hmm. But like, if you take one possession off, you get scored on, back cut, you give up some turnover or something. So I think it was like value every possession for me, which coach worked with me with that, um, just going hard every possession. Yeah, for me, I mean, I red shirted, so it was a slow grind to try to figure out what to do. Obviously, the game was way faster. The players were way better. But, I mean, I felt like I could always score. That wasn't really a thing. I think it was just a mindset thing, you know, just taking things seriously. Like, I couldn't figure out how to guard DHO for, like, the first two months. I was here. So, we're doing open gym, and we're doing DHOs. It's, like, our main offense, DHOs, DHOs. I just can't guard it. I just don't know how to. Like, I'm too close to get back cut, too far to three. Like, so the speed of things was, was difficult for me. But, I mean, just guarding, like, the best players in the country all the time. You got Colin, you got Justin, you have Sadiq. We had a lot of guys that I was getting killed by on a pretty consistent basis. And I think just after a while, you know, you get your butt kicked enough, you're going to want to figure out how to get it done. Mm -hmm. So, for yeah. sure. Yeah, same thing. I was kind of in a similar position as Eric. I didn't play my freshman year, really. Um, so, in practice, just trying to get your confidence up and build your skills and habits and your defense throughout the year. And by the end of the year, you became confident again that you could be a good player at this level so it just took time in your guys's preseason do you guys have like a like a boot camp uh conditioning week like is there anything like that in your guys's preseason nah i'm glad we don't like we don't do much like running per se like our running and conditioning is like practice like mm -hmm. we get up and down a lot and we mm -hmm. go so hard so how long do you guys practices usually go preseason like two hour 30 Pushing three sometimes, like yeah. what's the, what, so? Explain to people that might not know, like what's what's the main differences between an off season practice and an in season practice? Like how like how much time do you guys do in season versus off season? I mean, in season, it's way much quicker. Like we try to get in, go as hard as we can, it's for a low amount of time as possible because we got to take care of your body, be able to play. So in season, we might go like hour forty five hour 30, like, around there. But preseason, like, you don't got no games or nothing, so we got to get better. We're building, so, man, we might have some three-hour practice, especially, especially with Coach Wright early on. When I was a freshman, pushing three, three-plus sometimes. Like, you in there all day. Like, you don't see the daylight. Mm -hmm. Six days a week, too. Yeah. yeah. That one off day, though. What is it, what's your guys' favorite thing to do on off days? How do you guys recover and, and relock in for the for the week? Mm -hmm. I sleep. I do a lot of sleeping. Um, and then, especially, like, younger, doing three and a half, four-hour practices, like, sleeping. And a lot of time for me, I go home. I live 25, 30 minutes away from campus, so just go home and reset, like, talk to my family and just chill. I'll kind of do the same thing. I'm local. Um, just get off your feet, go see friends, family, do whatever I can on my off day. Uh, definitely wake up late. Cause it's one of those days where like your alarm not gonna don't gotta be set, so I need to wake up late. And then I'm probably just chilling, play some video games, like have some fun, like like some downtime or whatever. Do get, you guys get, do get some good food too, like some Chick Fil A or something. I need something <laughs> to like give me like back, like oh, I'm uh -huh. good, like <laughs> I'm like back locked in. Do you guys do like cold tub and all that stuff? I know they like had it. Where they would make us do it after practices and stuff. Do do they do that with you guys? Yeah. That's yeah. I hate the cold tub. Like cold tub was crazy to me. Like when I was a freshman, I mean, once you get older, you kind of like it becomes a necessity to a point. Like necessity is a stretch. Stretch. <laughs> stretch. Normatex. Normatex. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, what night before game. Night before game. <laughs> night before game. Yeah. 
whenever we got off the plane, they, like that was always our big thing is like do the Norma Tex, get get all that inflammation out of your legs from flying. Like I always felt like that made me feel like a new person going into games. Yeah, it definitely helps, especially when we have to fly places. How what's what's your guys' farthest road trip? Creighton. How far is that? The flight? Three? Two and a half, three. It's not, not, bad. not even bad. It's not bad. Do you guys uh have you guys taken your foreign trips? No. COVID kind of wiped that all out. Were you guys plan did you guys have one planned or was there one planned? I don't know yet. I haven't heard anything yet. Yeah, Clue don't don't need one. You don't uh, you don't want on one? record, don't need one. No. I like I mean You want to go to Italy or something? I Spain? Say, I'm home. Uh so <laughs> I enjoy being home. I like to go home on the weekends. Uh homebody, real homebody? Yeah. I mean and then here, the Jersey's like an hour and a half away. So, you know, go down the shore, relax, you know, that's enough. It's enough getting away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Works. Who in your guys' lives is the most important to you and why? I'll start. Uh, I go with my dad, just being like a good example of like how a man should be and how to grow up. Um, he always taught me to just come in, try to be the hardest working guy, hardest playing guy on the floor, do whatever I can to be my best self. So I got to go with him. Uh, that's why I say my mom and my brother. Like we real close. Um, and like the bond we have with each other is just like, we, we're so close with each other. We talk every day. Um, of course we love each other so much, but I think we all just teach each other things like that we're going through in life where I'm out here, my mom's working, my brother's doing his thing in high school, preparing for college. So we all just go through different things in our life and then talk about it and just learn from each other. We have that type bond that we just, uh, learn from each other in every aspect. Yeah, picking one person is hard for me. I say, I say, my dad, my mom, my dad, my mom, my brother, all teach me different things. Like my dad, being a man, comes off as an athlete. My mom, like being a student, being a good person. Like my brother is kind of just like my relief from like everything that's going on with me personally. Because he's ten, so mm -hmm. he's living in a totally different world. He's playing Fortnite, you know, working with multiplication and binomials, stuff like that, like factors and things that. You know, I don't care about it anymore. So just <laughs> like if I have a bad game or I have a tough day or, you know, uh, weigh in, didn't go how I wanted to go on that day. Um, he just keeps my mind off of it. Like He's like, hey, look at this battle royale I just got. Look at this win I just <laughs> got. Like, you know, he's just a great uh, change of pace for me. For the transition between Coach Wright to Coach Neptune, how did you guys find out? Did that blindside you or what was what was that scenario like? Definitely blindside. Um I think I was asleep, woke up, and I see like rumors on Twitter and like everyone coming into the into our rooms and stuff talking about like you see what's on Twitter or whatever. I wasn't really believing it. And then once they said we're having a meeting at like, whatever time it was, I'm like, oh, like uh, this for real. So I mean, it, it definitely caught me off guard. And of course I was upset at first, just how it went down. I felt like he, he should have told us beforehand before it got leaked out. but. Things happen, and I see why he decided to retire, and he did what's best for, for him, so I'm, I can't be mad at that. Yeah, same for me. Found out on Twitter, and then we normally don't have meetings at, like, 8 or 9 at night, and uh, our dobo said that we had a meeting, so that's when it really set in that Coach Wright was retiring. But uh, Nap's definitely been a good replacement, and he's going to help lead the program um, to a good spot in the future. For sure. Yeah, woke up from a nap to a bunch of Twitters and phone calls. Felt like everybody knew before I did. Um, I actually woke up. My first tweet I saw was Mikhail tweeted. He was like, congratulations at Kyle Neptune. And I was like, huh? huh? <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. But there's always rumors about Coach Wright retiring. So I was like, oh, it's whatever. All Another the coaches day. at the top of the game, there's always going to be rumors. Like, yeah. I feel like that was like part of like, like part of our lives. It's just like almost the anxi anxiety of it all. Like, you don't know if, like what's going on with your coach. You don't know what's going on with, with with other things around college basketball. Like, does that anxiety like weigh on you guys? Is that like a, a part of it, or what do you guys think? I think during it, or like you'd always hear the rumors about Coach Wright to like the Sixers <clears throat> or the Knicks. Um, he did a good job at just telling us right away. He's like, I'm not doing anything like that. Um, but I think with his retirement, I think somehow it got leaked before he was able to tell us. Um, I don't know. I think he just told us when it was true or when it wasn't. So I wasn't really worried. 
What uh, what's one thing people don't know about playing high major Division one basketball? Something the casual college basketball fan does not know. Um, probably just like the attention to detail, like the daily grind of like knowing sets, knowing which way they're going, knowing when they like to shoot, knowing how they rebound, who goes to rebound, who doesn't go to rebound, how fast they play, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I think little things like that that you wouldn't even think about. Like if the guy drove right and shot a floater, was that a win for you defensively or not? You know, if you made a step back, like maybe the defense wouldn't have to take that shot. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I think just the little nuances of the game like that, I think people probably overlook. Um, I think just like the how much time we really put into everything. Like I think everybody just think it's all peaches and cream. Like it's easy. Um, and we still got regular lives we dealing with. We regular people. We got classes we gotta go to. We putting all this work in basketball, film. So, like. I feel like we're working overtime for sure, and then people don't understand how much we, we really put into this stuff. So I think other people just taking a step back and realizing, like, what we're doing is, like, special. I think it's like like Justin was saying, it's it's like a job, and people don't understand that. And just um, another thing is every possession of the game matters. Like, people always get mad or react to how the end of the game might happen with, like, a buzzer beater or something. But if you made a play earlier in the game and didn't give up a a bucket that just totally changes how the game would be by the end. So how important every single possession of the game is. For sure. I mean, I think people don't, like, they see you for the two hours that the game's on yeah. and they see that and they don't see everything that comes before that. And I think that's something that weighs on college athletes, right. the, the amount of how much it means to you. Like people questioning how much it means to you. Like this is, or this is your guys' lives. Like this is what you work every day for. Yeah. Top three NBA players of all time? Kobe, one. No question. Kobe, MJ, Braun. That's my top three. I like that one a lot. In order? Yeah, in order. I like that a lot. I'll go LeBron, Mike, Kobe. I mean, LeBron's the greatest player. I mean, he's the greatest human specimen that ever stepped the basketball court. I go Mike, LeBron. I was questioning Kobe, but wow. now nah, we'll put Kobe in there. I was thinking it's about say Kareem. Like, nah, I wasn't. Uh, I was thinking about think. Dominic. I was thinking Shaq for a second, and then I was thinking Steph. I love Steph Curry. So Steph, yeah. just he, dude, he's the changed the game. Shooter. <clears throat> I almost put him in there, but I'm gonna go with the same list as them. Have you guys seen how the game the game's changed and Steph like dude. took over like, took over and showed. The younger generation, like what can happen on the basketball court, like how talk about that difference and how it's either a three or a dunk. Like that's what the league is playing to these days. Yeah, I mean, you see elementary school kids trying to pull up from deep airballing and stuff. <laughs> like, um, he's definitely changed the game with the three point shot and celebrations and stuff and the excitement to the game. Um, it, I think it's great for basketball. I think with him specifically, he's not like the biggest, most athletic guy, but he's definitely one of the most skilled guys, and that's what makes him one of the best players in the league. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> for me, uh, I played I played big man my whole life, so even like from fifth and sixth grade, like always posting up, like at the middle school, they were like, you have to be able to shoot the three, like you can't not be able to shoot the three. Like seventh grade, I was a foul line elbow assassin, but then like. High school, you know, like you gotta step out a little bit further and start shooting three. So, I think from a big man perspective, that's probably how you change it for me. Even being from like a big guy, like guarding other bigs, like I feel like every big you have you guard nowadays is pop. Like majority of them are popping and shooting threes. Like that's become a part of the game that's you're not used to seeing as big guys that really stretch it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Some guys though, you know, when they step out to shoot the three. I'll take it. Who's so, who's somebody in the in the Big East that you're like, oh, that's a big guy. You can't let shoot threes. Uh, that we can't let shoot threes. <laughs> um, I mean, Big East is filled with good guys, uh, a lot of skilled guys. I think our conference is is unique in that way from a great perspective. It's a lot of physical, skilled forwards. Guys that you just can't let shoot a three. I mean, Nunji's a good shooter. Sanogo's a good shooter. You know, uh, <laughs> 
You said can't let him can't. shoot a three? You can't, can't let, let him shoot a three. You know, centers. Centers. I mean, even like four men, like, I was, like last year, like with Manic, like North oh, yeah. Carolina. Like, he not like those guys center, are like, though. Like, not a center. I don't know. His is cash. His shot was cash. So though. cash. Yeah. I think, you, I think with North Carolina, like they're missing that part of their team this year because people don't realize how much that four man shooting affected everything. Yeah. Like it allows another guy to be in the paint if your four man isn't yeah. shooting like that. So with you guys, you guys have always been prolific with free throw shooting. Last year, you guys set the record for highest free throw percentage throughout a season. Like what what goes into that? You guys working on that extra in practice, or is that just something that is expected when you guys go out there? Yeah, we work on that in practice for sure. Um, a lot of free throws on our own, and then in practice throughout changing different drills and stuff. We work on it in the practice, and I think it's just the mindset the coach talks us about. It's like not worrying about if you miss or make it. Like if you miss it or so what, we we'll come back and get a stop. So I think that takes a lot of pressure off our guys and just go out there and shoot your shot. Yeah, he said it perfectly. Yeah, I'm seconding Justin. All right. Rapid fire at the end. Um, 20 seconds to answer them all. We're going to get started. Hold on, how are we doing it? Like- I'm going to ask, I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with Arch. I'm doing 20 seconds? Yeah, I'm going to go with you, and then we'll go to you, okay. and go to you. Is it all different questions? Or no, all the same. Okay. Just so you, mm-hmm. I mean, you guys feel, feel, right. feel free to jump <laughs> in and refute, re- refute right. his answer at the end, too. Okay. Best piece of advice you've ever received? Be the hardest playing guy on the floor. Uh, God is my protector. I fear no one. You can be out play, but you can't be out work. That's really good. I like those two. When on a travel, th- when on a travel trip, what's something that you will never forget? Just being with the guys, having dinner. Um, the locker room vibes. Went to the DR. Couldn't use the water. Had to use bottled water. For <laughs> yeah, yeah. Favorite thing about Villanova outside of basketball. Mm. Outside of basketball, um, just just hanging out with the guys. It's real guys guy. Yeah. The community aspect, I think, being close to home. Mm. But not rabbit fire over there. The fa- like ah, the sure. the family base, like the community, like everyone's together. For sure, for sure. That's probably twenty five. Really not rabbit fire. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite restaurant. Ooh. Ozzy. Del Frisco's. Great call. Yo, rapid fire. I hop. <laughs> I hop. <laughs> Aisle or window seat on a plane? Aisle. Aisle. Window. Big fellas. Aisle. Yeah, like For, sure. For sure. In 20 years, what would you guys be doing? Museum curator. Um, 20 years. Maybe like a finance job. I don't know. Something around the game, but like. Raising my kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so they straight, like, yeah. Most likely on your team to become president. Arch. Arch. President Arch? Yeah. All right, that is it for the 20 second rapid fire. Final question. What's your why and what motivates you? Just knowing um, that all the work you've put in throughout your life um, just motivates me to reach my goals or at the end of my career, whatever the goal is, um, just I think I want to play professionally somewhere. Just knowing all the work that I put in, it just keeps pushing me forward. Um, I, I mean, I love this game for one, and then I think, like I say, God has a plan. So I feel like He put me on this earth to display my talents. Um, he gave me some gifts that everyone has, so I feel like it's my purpose to display it to my fullest ability and see what happens from there. Yeah, uh, my why is definitely my family. I just feel like everything that they've put into me throughout their lives, it's only right that I go out every single day and take the fullest advantage of it. Like, I wouldn't be here without them, wouldn't be on the court, wouldn't be walking around without their support and love. So for me, definitely my why is my family. Awesome. I appreciate you guys coming on. It was it was awesome getting to know you guys and uh, hopefully giving your fans a little insight into what Villanova basketball is all about. Thanks for having us. Appreciate, appreciate you guys. Next up.